I have a live socially distanced playbook. I feel like Trevor <laughs> Noah here. David Carpenter, speaker, life coach, sales agent, super sales guy, by the way, executive of American Income Life Insurance Company, one of the best ways to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. Welcome right. to the playbook, David. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, man. It's oh, an honor. I'm so big fan. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> I just found out something that touched my heart, and you and I both have this in common. I worked for many, many years to buy my mom a house in a car. <laughs> and you just, at, since 2002, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. 19 years, yeah. you just bought your mom a house. Yeah, yeah how, glory to God, man. <laughs> how, yeah, how, how, tell people how that felt. Like when you, like you oh. actually, and how, and how did you surprise her? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, how I felt, it was just the most rewarding time of my life. You know, a lot of times uh, people are working hard and they say they want to do something for their family or they want to give back or help their help their parents. Um, but they're not really that serious. You, oftentimes their parents are working harder than them. Right. And it felt so good to just be diligent, consistent and just like finally see things pay off and get that award to be able to do that for my mom because she sacrificed so much. But it was like the most blissful moment I would say in my life, man. It was just unbelievable to give her that check and be able to pay back a little bit towards the major impact and all the sacrifice she's done for me. So it was, uh, it was an honor, man. You know, I'm putting myself back to when I was able to do that for my own mom. And unfortunately, you know, I was younger. You were talking about <clears throat> the confidence yeah, that we're doing things for the right reason. Yeah, right. And yes. like, these people that say they want to buy their mom a house in a car, I was kind of caught in between because I did the work to buy my mom a house in a car. Mm -hmm. Right, since I was five years old, sitting in the back of a station wagon, wow. mom working two jobs, packing my dinner in a paper bag, telling my hyper academic siblings, "I'm mm -hmm. going to buy mom a house in a car. I don't need to read." Yeah, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Basically, they didn't call them <laughs> that back then. I was. They called myself a hustler and yeah. uh, five year old hustler. Yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> When I bought my mom a house, I, I have to be very honest, mm -hmm. it was more about the acknowledgement as much as it was about mm -hmm. I had dreamed about helping her, yeah. which felt great. Yeah. But there was for years this almost, you know, I need to be called your favorite child. Ooh. You don't appreciate me. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't unconditional in my Man. giving the way my yes. mom was. I worked. I worked. Yeah. I wasn't one. My, you know, my mom worked. Yeah. And I, I, that wasn't a problem, but where I had my problem mm -hmm. was I was very philanthropic throughout my twenties yes. as a multimillionaire. Yeah. But there was always a trade and negotiation, yeah. some sort of thing that I wanted back. Yeah. And it took me years to give unconditionally yes. where I wasn't somehow laying it into the conversation. Hey, yeah, well, I, I, I own that house. Or yeah. I, in fact, you know, the universe loved to spank yeah. you. Yeah, when I, I went agree. bankrupt, I forgot <laughs> to take, I, I forgot to take the, the house out of my mom's name. The fact that I had to put it in my name when I gave it to my mom wow. gives you my mindset. Mm -hmm. And I'm very honest about oh, it because I'm not that. there now. I give my mom everything. I don't want my name on anything yeah. that she owns. It's I all agree. hers. No, I was caught. I was caught in that too uh, for a long time. I mean, I still suffer with it. Like we all do. We're all human. We like the recognition. We like to have our name out there. Like this is amazing. But you got to like recenter, like you said, your intentions and you make sure your heart's pure. You got to keep it that way because ego likes to creep in a lot of the times and ego is the destruction of greatness and really like getting to that, plat you know, getting to that next level. So I had to really kind of reflect in that moment before I gave it to her that I was doing it for the right reasons, because if you're given uh, for the wrong reasons or for selfish reasons, don't expect expect to be blessed. Like giving is always going to lead back to more blessings, but if you're doing it for recognition and and you're cutting you're cutting off your source of blessings, you're not going to feel the same way when you release it too, because that's the best feelings when you release unconditionally. So I agree with you completely. Most and, ta and taking it to the business level, one of the other nuances that I found is that release also is attributed to receiving yeah. and asking. And the true salespeople like yourself, the super successful salespeople, the executives that are the top performers, they're okay receiving because of one thing. They know that in their heart that when they receive, it's coming through them for others. Yes. It, it is unconditional and it is selfless. And I find that a lot of sales reps, like I was when I was young, that oversell, back end sell, lie, manipulate, cheat, mm -hmm. things that I did in a matter of scarcity 
they actually have difficulty receiving and asking mm-hmm. because they don't feel good about it because mm-hmm. they're not doing the right things with what they're receiving. How have you been able to reconcile that? Because you're so young, you know, mm-hmm. and there's a, a firm pressure when you're your age to buy things you don't need yeah. because you've never had them, <clears throat> to buy things to impress other people, mm-hmm. even on people you don't like. Mm-hmm. How have you dealt with that issue <laughs> in receiving to not just help yourself and have cool watches and a yeah. diamond necklace, but to be truly unconditional with yeah. your giving? No, that's a really great question. I think because I'm still learning it, which is awesome, but I've also experienced losing it all. So I've never came from anything. I got, you know, I was very successful at 22, 23, making multiple six figures, like high six figures, and I lost it all. I had leaders quit on me. Um, you know, I almost died in a car accident, and I was in a really low place in my life. And I really uh, realized who was with me because a lot of my friends didn't show up at the hospital. I'm in the ICU. And uh, that was like the moment that I realized that I value people more than I value possessions because it can go like this. So it's not the fact that I don't like nice things. I think those will come in time, but I really knew in that moment that my purpose was to serve others and to, that I was here to take care of my family. And I was here to really help people understand like the principles of life and really what it's about, which is like, cherishing genuine people and relationships and putting people first over profits. And, you know, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to have nice things, but if that's your only focus and it's selfish, it's like, man, that's a lonely life. Yeah. And that mindset for such someone at such a young age to have that mindset, what were some of the things that you were reading or people you were listening Mm -hmm. to, or what kind of ideas were Mm -hmm. the catalyst for you to shift your paradigm Mm -hmm. to understand this passion should be in people, not necessarily profits? Yeah, it's a great question. So it's books. I mean, I read the Bible. I love Think and Go Rich. I love uh, John C. Maxwell stuff. I love your stuff. You (laughs) believe the same stuff. I love listening to your your, your audios, your podcasts, everything that you have to, cause you think the same way. And I know that you have not only wealth in one area, which is finances, but you have wealth in all areas. And that's why I'm like, you know, love just the fact that I'm here. And, and so when you're listening to John and myself and mm-hmm. uh, Napoleon Hill, mm-hmm. you know, it's one thing for what. And I gotta give my say. mentor a shout out to Dustin Vinnie Camp. Love you, yeah. man. I didn't forget about you. Good, no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. So when you're listening to all yes. of us, I always say it's not what we say, it's what we hear. Yeah. Ooh. And so I'm always looking for takeaways. You know, if someone come up to you and say, you know, I I love the group of ideas that you surround yourself with, Mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? Because that tells me what you're hearing. So what does it mean to you to have that great group of mentors? I'll exclude myself as great, but the group of (laughs) mentors sharing those ideas that have similar frequencies. Yeah. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? Well, I treasure it because I know that I'm a byproduct of it. Like I mimic the greats. I don't think uh, you have to recreate the wheel. I'm a student and I'm humble enough to understand that I'm nothing without my mentors and nothing without God. Like I'm a vessel and I, I just apply and learn what the greats have already done. And that's why I love studying your content. I love studying theirs. Yeah, and then the other side of it, I is the growth that occurs. And a lot of times when we're younger, we can't see, you know, you're an old soul, you have great (laughs) illumination of, you know, past experiences, but how do you keep patient? Because growth never occurs as fast as we want, especially mathematically. So if Mm -hmm. you're in your, say you're 25 years old, every year is one 25th of your life. It's only one 53rd of mine. So even if we have the equal amount of patience, yes. I'm going to be more patient than you mm-hmm. percentage wise For sure. because I can handle it. Yeah. So how do you deal with blending patience with growth that you want? I think you just knowing that it's a necessity in that you have to go through trials. You got to go through the tribulations and it's a process and you got to love the process more than the prize and understand that it's going to build you into the person you need to be. So I just, know that it's an, it, it, I have to be patient because that's the only way to make it. And it's like, what else am I going to do? If you're in your calling, it's worth it. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I just learned to enjoy the pain. I learned to love the things I hate. I learned to love the disciplines that come with it, the consistency, the habits, because that's what grows you as a person and makes you and shapes you into who you need to be in order to have the wealth, that type of impact. 
I feel like I'm interviewing myself, David. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not just because Thank we have you. the same name. That's an that's honor, for, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great. It's, I, I love it. I'm going to ask you a more difficult question. Okay. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? It's a great question. Uh, I am afraid of, am I afraid of heights? I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm, okay. afraid of, I'm afraid of not, I'm afraid of my own self in terms of pride creeping up. I'm afraid of going back to like my old ways. I'm afraid of screwing up my life uh, and not being able to take care of my family. I'm afraid of not failing because I failed so much before, but I'm afraid of like not being the person that I'm supposed to be because of maybe fear, maybe not getting on podcasts with people like yourself because you know at first you feel intimidated. Uh, I'm afraid not to like discover the greatness that's within me that I you know like fulfill and, and really live the life that I feel God's called me to, to, to do. And with that fear of, for example, repetitive behavior, mm-hmm. you know, for me, that was one of my greatest fears when I lost everything was I, I was so afraid that I'd do it again. I knew mm-hmm. that I was given an opportunity to grow, to learn, to change, that I had extraordinary experiences and relationships that could catapult me from this basement of the bottom, as I called it, yeah. into new, like unbelievable realms. Yeah. But because of that, I was terrified that I was a fraud, an imposter, that I'd end up in the exact same place. The profession that you're in is actually one that helped to resolve my fear. Wow. Uh, and I'll tell you why. What I learned, one of the most valuable lessons, and, and, and I want you to take this with you, is that you're yes. really good at making money. Like yeah. People don't make that kind of money when they're 20, 21. We both made a lot of money at a young age. That means it's quantum in our nature, right? It's yeah. inherent in God-given gifts. The same way yeah. that I promise you LeBron James could beat both of us two on one when he was eight years old <laughs> because he was born with that. With that For sure. But he couldn't outsell us. Yeah. Right? We could yeah. both outsell him at eight. Yeah. One on six. Yeah. No problem. My greatest fear was that fraud side. And so I decided, what if I just focused in on making money? And there was a vehicle that I could use to put my money and just allow it to have no energy in my life. Wow. Meaning it would only grow. Mm-hmm. I would, it would grow when things are bad, it would grow at a really small rate. Mm. And when things were good, or great, it would grow at, at a good rate, not a great rate when wow. it was great, but it would grow at a percentage of the greatness. Mm-hmm. You know, when everybody else is making 100% on their money, yeah. 60. And that's what life insurance based products, IULs, yeah. annuities, yeah. that provided, mm-hmm. there's no chance that I can lose my money. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, that gave me this unbelievable sense of security wow. that I wasn't a fraud. Because my biggest fear was myself, like you said, yeah. that I would go ahead and make bad decisions. I'd be in Las Vegas. Yeah. I would do dumb things. Yes. I would fall back into the ego-based consciousness oh, of trying to impress people I didn't like. Yes. And having life insurance-based products wow. to me, and that's why you know I'm a firm believer in two things about the business you're in. One, mm. it's a grit business, yeah. meaning give me anyone and I could teach you to be a millionaire. Yeah. I could teach anybody in your business to be a millionaire. I, you, I there's it. no doubt why you like the, some of the stuff I have because yeah. the values that I hold in the daily practices that I serve, anyone in, in the life insurance business will be a millionaire. I could teach anyone, yeah. email me, I promise there we go. you. But the other side of it, Yes. Is my own side that I teach other people is wouldn't it be nice just to focus in on producing, <clears throat> making money, being accessible and gracious with your mm-hmm. life yes. and not playing a lottery ticket all the time? Yeah, it would. And that's what you provide for you. What did you fall back on to give you that security? Because you and I share the same name, the same fears and the same successes yeah. and failures. <laughs> what do you use to not feel like an imposter? Because you still have some of it in you. Oh, for sure. We all do. Um, I would say it would be the the giving because I don't think it's necessarily, you know, there's a saying, all the, the money is the root of all evil. Like, I don't believe that. I think like if you are only in loving, loving money and you're using people and that's like your, like your God, basically, then it's like, okay, we got to look at that. No judgment. But uh, I think the giving is like the security, which is kind of crazy, but I just love to to give like everything I earn, I give 10% plus like 15, 20%. Um, and that's like my security in it. In terms of like investments, I like, it's funny cause I'm actually 
throwing a lot of money into like the crypto market, which yeah. I've, I've seen great returns with, which is actually not, it's like very volatile. And then life insurance. I have plenty of life insurance policies like yourself that are secure, that are going to give you that right gain. And then the best part about it is you've, if you prematurely die, your family is going to receive millions of dollars. And knowing that I took care of my family, if heaven forbid I was to pass away tonight, I, I did my job. That they're going to be able to open up that blue folder and say, hey, David thought about me. You know what I mean? That he thought about me. He left this impact for me. And uh, that's a life that's worth remembering, I think. so. That's wonderful. And then to the point, you're very goal-oriented. Your profession yeah. is very goal-oriented. Being a speaker, a life coach, and a sales expert, <laughs> very goal-oriented. Thank you. But you've just reached a plateau. Buying your mom a house is huge. Mm -hmm. What's your next target of what you want to give? Thank you for saying that. So I'm actually, my next one is to retire her. So I want to give her 10,000 a month. That's my next. So I'm never just hitting goals because I agree with you. And that's what I, my downfall was in the past. I'd go make a bunch of money. I hit my goal and I would just let off. And then I would just go back to like my thermostat, like what I was worth before, prior. So now I have a legal pad. I actually learned this from Grant Cardone. I write them out, present tense, speak them out loud so I can build my subconscious and believe it and know and have certainty and faith. And I write them out um, based on things that scare me. Because every time I've written out a goal and I've said it and I've spoken, I believed it in my heart and I went out to achieve it, it's happened. So I'm constantly stretching myself, writing new goals. And that was like the first thing I did after I hit it was went back to it because I write it out every morning. I did it before I came here. And, uh, and I'm like, man, and then after that, there's going to be something else. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar on to uncle G there for, <laughs> uh, one of the things that I learned over the years is about water. So I, I always list out, you know, in my mantras, I meditate every morning, Love it. very intentional about what I do. I believe the mathematical equation of luck is one that you utilize, which is what I'm going to pay attention to today, according mm -hmm. to my, what, who, how, now, and why, what I pay attention to today and give my intention to will equal the coincidences in my life, a mathematical equation of luck. When coincidences wow. occur frequently in your life, people call you lucky. Yeah. I don't think so, but I'm just very calculated in the way that I pay attention and give intention to things. With my list, I actually take water every morning and pick my most prioritized thing on my list according to the values for that day. Mm. Not being afraid of being a hypocrite or an imposter, not being afraid of what I don't have, what's missing, what other people want for me. And I take that intention in every sip of drink that I have during the day since I'm over 80% water and water conducts electricity or energy better than anything else, right? You don't want to be in a swimming pool holding a rod during a, a lightning storm <laughs> oh, for a idea. reason, right? For sure. Well, think about what you're doing wow. when you're taking the most powerful vibration or frequency, mm. putting it into what you're drinking, water, mm. and then what? Putting it inside of yourself to wow. carry all day long. Listen to Uncle G. He's right. You got to write it out, but take Uncle D's advice, mm -hmm. put the sugar on top, get the exponential value, compound interest, which wow. you've learned in your business. The yeah. rule of 72 by Einstein, one of the best things you can teach in life insurance, how <laughs> things can compound upon themselves. So yes. can intentions and intentions and attention of good habits. Last question real quick. Mm -hmm. Passion. A lot of people get their passion confused in mm -hmm. a pragmatic world. How do you blend this ethereal, spiritual, think and grow rich, woo woo type of belief system that you have called faith mm -hmm. with one of the most pragmatic money based businesses uh, in the world. How are you blending that spirituality, yeah. this intention, this drinking water mm -hmm. with the math? I love it. Um, well, I just believe that's my vehicle. So I use it as a vehicle, like it's my platform to help other people. Cause I have a lot of people that follow me in the life insurance industry and in the, in the business. So it's my, it's like my duty to learn this and know the principles and know the right values and be able to share that through that business and show other people how a normal kid that came from nothing, that dad was in prison, single mom raised, foreign mom, like can, can go just basically start a new life and, and change the legacy of his whole entire family, you know, be the first millionaire and you you know, my brother passed away, cousins are all in jail or in prison. Like you can change your life with the right information and applied information like wisdom. So it's my, it's like my duty. Like I want to see people that are looking and seeking, like I was like you were at a young age and just 
help them as much as possible because if you know god this did this for me like i owe it back to them because some mentors like yourself did it for us first so just to finish up i save this one you and i share the same first name yeah. uh, it means beloved do you know oh. that's what your name means? Oh, I didn't know that. And my last name means waiter or, or servant, Meltzer, wow. and so does Carpenter, right? Who, who was the greatest servant of all time? He was a Jesus. carpenter. Yeah. Exactly. So both of our names mean beloved servant. Wow. And in that mission and in that name, may we both carry that mission of empowering others by being beloved servants to everyone else, including our moms. Yeah. So I'm getting a little bit choked up. I just want to thank you so much. You're an extraordinary coach. You're an extraordinary uh -huh. salesperson, but more importantly, you're an extraordinary person. And I can't wait to see what you will not only believe, but achieve in your lifetime. Mm -hmm.